Ladies and gentlemen, this contest comes to a halt at 2 minutes 27 seconds of the third round. The blow that ended the bout was ruled a legal body shot. Your winner by knockout and still WBA Continental North America Federal Champion, Angelo Lingo! Okay, oh, you your team? I oh, he was a lot. Nah, I got an issue, bro. He did. Yeah. 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 Yo, did y'all enjoy the fight? Yeah, yeah baby! Fight? Oh. Let's go! Solid, 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 solid work. On hello! The Untouchable True School Sports Empire probably presents something the boxing game's been missing. Hey, what's going on? It's your boy BT, and I came here to talk some boxing with the thousands of True School Sports subscribers. Now, this is my official post fight review for Angelo Leo versus Mike Planilla, and the result of the fight was obviously, as many of you guys know, a devastating third round body shot, liver shot from Angelo Leo that folds up Mike Planilla, and, and he gets a second consecutive knockout victory so far look angelo leo has had two fights at featherweights so far he's, he's two and oh with two knockouts at featherweight so that 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 guy that you got that, that many people thought was feather fisted and couldn't punch as hard as 122 so far he's shown to be a different fighter a more skillful fighter a more stronger fighter in the featherweight division so let's talk about the whole car i'm, I'm gonna run through the whole car first and foremost let me let me give a shout out to pops who held it down on the live last night shout out to pops who did a great job but as far as the main event, you know, this is a good fight for Angelo because, you know, it was his second fight in three months, which is great for him because we know that Angelo Leo had the the layoff um, for two years where, you know, he was, wasn't fighting. And, you know, he was fighting a guy in Planilla that's, that's been a bit of an up and down fighter, but a guy that's been in there with some names. You know, he fought in the past. He had fought Joshua Greer and beat him. He fought Elijah Pierce recently. He had fought Rai Salim. So it wasn't a big good fight for him. And, you know, we'll call it off for what it is. We can't be biased here on True School Sports. Planilla was a guy that was fighting at 22, coming up to, 20, coming up to featherweight. But still, a tough fighter who has been there with a lot of names that um, are notable in and around his weights. So, you know, people people wanted to know, like, what, you know, is what True School, is what BT saying the truth? Because a lot of times in these videos, I'll say things that I really believe about Angelo. It's not like I'm, I'm, not, I'm not saying these things because he's my friend. I'm saying these things because I believe him. And the things I say are the fact that the guy that fought Alameda, the guy that fought Stephen Fulton, the, even the guy that fought Tremaine Williams, you know, good fighter, you know, good fighter, world champion. He won a world title strictly just off of conditioning and volume punching and stamina and, 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 and a little bit of angles. But the guy that's fighting now, this fight against Planilla and the fight against uh, Nicholas Polanco at featherweight, Whole different fight. I would say he's leveled up five levels. You know, just much much different guy. But you know, just breaking down the fight. First round was a feel out round. wasn't a whole lot to make of that fight. I think both fighters trying to establish their range, get and, and get their range um, down. In the second round, you had Planilla who tried to smother Angelo, and I think Angelo did a good job staying patient. Um, the handful of shots that, that Planilla was able to land, Angelo, even when he got touched by them a little bit, he, he, he rolled the shots and they grazed him. And then in the third round, I think Angelo had the range of Planilla down and, and he started really making him miss and making him pay and, you know, touching every side of that body. I mean, before he folded him up, before he knocked him out with the liver shot, 
there was a right a right handy through to the other side of the body and that one when, when it touched Plinia, you could tell it kind of it got his attention and then the left hook finished him off so it was a, it was a great knockout for him the referee you know the referee and I was just so you guys know um as many of you guys may have saw if you watched the broadcast uh, I did walk out with Angelo to the ring I, I actually had the belt um, they, you know, Miguel, Leo, and uh, Luis Chavez asked me last minute when we were in the dressing room if, if I wanted to walk him out, and of course I said yes, and I thought it was an honor, and, um, you know, he wound up doing the business, and I walked out with him, so where I was sitting, the reason I bring it up is because where I was sitting was, I wasn't, I wasn't in the corner, so to speak, but I was kind of off to the side near the ring, so I had a pretty good view of what was, what was, what was being said between the commission and, um, you know, the, the ref. And so I want to I want to give a big tip of the cap to the Florida Commission because the referee was completely befuddled. He had no idea what was going on. You know, he was going to give Mike Plania all that time to get up. And you know, the commission, he, you know, he asked the commission, was it was it a, what, was it a legal punch? Did, did, it, did it land? You know, was it a, a real a legal punch? And, and to their credit, they said yes, it was, and that's why the fight ultimately wound up getting waved off. So. Um, you know, almost a bit of controversy. They avoided it. So c congratulations to the commission for helping the referee get it right. Because, again, the referees have a tough, thankless job. Sometimes they're not going to see everything that happens in real time. It's hard, uh, you know. So they did a good job. And, and justice prevailed. And Angelo Leo gets their on stoppage. Um, before we get to Angelo, just to touch on Planilla. You know, shout out to Mike Planilla. He's a real warrior of the sport. He's a tough Filipino warrior. Mike is in a bad run of form now because... You know, he's he's got suffered back to back third round knockout losses to Elijah Pierce and Angelo Leo. And this one in particular, he, you know, this is this is bad. I think Angelo did his his ribs real bad. It looked like he had a he might have had a, a broken rib or something like that. So, you know, he, he may he may not, he may never be the same. And he you know, he needs to think long and hard about, you know, how he's gonna come back from this. But I you know, respect to him. He he did the best with what he could. It just wasn't enough. There's levels in boxing and, and Angelo Leo once again shows that He's improving, guys. Like, don't like, like, like. He, the guy that fought Alameda, the guy that fought Stephen Fulton, I couldn't be more adamant about anything in boxing. Get that out of your head. He's not that guy no more. Guy, and, and I want to normalize this. Not, and this, this just isn't an Angelo thing. This is a every but every fighter in boxing thing. Let's normalize as fight fans. And when we watch the sport, guys can get better and guys can get worse. Guys can develop. They can progress and they can regress. Angelo is progressing. And you got to really sit back and think about it. He was locked into a bad contract with Mayweather Promotions that kept him out of the ring for some time. Okay. But he didn't let that get him down. He stayed in the gym. He was sparring guys like Shakur Stevenson, Marlon Topalis, Nonito Donaire. Um, I've even heard he sparred like Bruce Carrington, uh, Subaru Murata. And there's a whole, a whole host of world-class fighters in Vegas. And it shows. It's showing in his fights because... He's, he's showing you more boxing ability. He's showing you more speed. He's showing you uh, the same body punching that won him a world title. He's showing you angles. And it would have been better if Planilla was a more durable because you, you guys would have to see even more of Angelo. But I'm telling you, he's right now, the way he's developing, I'd, 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 I'd feel pretty confident picking him against any featherweight in the division right now, um, any, any of the champions. So I don't care if it's... Ray Vargas versus Nick Ball winner, the Comatov Ford winner, Rafael Espinosa, or um, Venado Lopez. I, I would feel very confidently picking Angelo against those guys. Not not because he's my friend, not because I'm cool, not because I, but because I'm seeing the development. I, I I I know I know his fight game inside and out. I've seen him spar plenty of times, 2021 and 2022. And I'm telling you guys, the guy that's fighting now is not that guy anymore. Um, and I'm happy for him. I'm, I'm just happy for him, and I hope I hope that the powers that be in boxing allow him to continue to move forward and um, show his showcase his talents to the world because he is a guy that I do think is becoming a late bloomer. His best boxing's in front of him. He's in his prime, and um, I do think, and I'll I'll get it on record now on video for you guys. I do think Angel Lee, with the way he's developing, is going to be a world champion again by the end of this year. So uh, featherweight division. Look out. We'll see, we'll see what we'll see what happens to Angelo. But great performance nonetheless. Wanted to run by some other things in the card. Because, I mean, I, I showed up for Angelo, but I, but I was interested in some of the other fights on the card. You know, you had Romero Duno on this card against Mike, uh, against um, Antonio Moran, the veteran fighter. Now, let, let, let me give you guys some insight. Angelo Leo was actually in the same changing room as Romero Duno. So I had a chance to see Romero Duno hit the pads. Very explosive, very fast. 
And we know Duno, he's, he's like many Filipino fighters, a guy that's very explosive, very fast. But we know Ryan Garcia put him on a highlight reel and other fighters have put him on a highlight reel. And this is a chance for him to really against a guy in Antonio Moran who, you know, Antonio Moran, good fighter. When he stepped up to those those guys on the world, on the, on the top or top 10 parts of the world level, like the guys like Jermaine Ortiz or the guys like Devin Haney, he hasn't been able to quite cut the mustard against those guys and beat those guys. But anytime he's fought anything below that level, so like whether he's fighting the Kendall Castanedas or anything like that, he's always found a way to win. That's why when he fought in this uh, Pro Box Last Chance tournament, he won the fight. And so a lot of people, though, you know, just being here in Plant City, talking to some of the Pro Box people and, and, and even the fans that came, the, the talk and the chatter was that a lot of people felt like, you know, Antonio Moran had slipped and that Duno was going to catch him at the right time and knock him out. And once again, it's proven again. You doubt you Antonio Moran, you, you, you step him down a level, he shows you that he's above that level again. So with that win against a guy like Duno, who's been, you know, in there with some top guys, Moran might just find himself another, you know, good payday. Maybe not against like, you know, the, the top guys, but maybe some guys in the top, top 10, top 15 of the division he fights. I think he's, I think he now he's at, he's got to be at 140 now, 140. So anybody at 140 or 135 or anything like that, wherever he's at right now, um, that good for him. I mean, in the fight, Duno tried to do what Duno does. He tried to press him. He tried to, you know, make it a fight. And, and I thought Moran, and he does this really well. He's a very competent professional fighter. He did a good job of boxing him at range, keeping him on the end of that jab and countering him when he made defensive mistakes. And um, that counter left hook, is ultimately what what put put out Duno, and so he took Duno's best attribute and flipped it on him, and that's what really good fighters do at that at that high level. Um, Duno came in, he flipped it on him, landed the left hook, and Duno was supposed to knock him out, put him on the floor, and he found himself on the floor. So Duno gets knocked out again. Moran gets another win, and and, and Antonio Moran journey continues. So good win for him, and I was happy to see it. The other now the other fight there were, there were other fights in the car. Like I know Chris Pearson fought Montgomery, but I wasn't paying too much attention to that fight. But I know um. I think Montgomery won that fight. The only other fight that I really was locked into that I watched, that I was uh, there for, was uh, the prospect, Michael Gamble. You know, Michael Gamble is my second time seeing him fight. I've had a chance to interview him in the past when he left out here last time when I was here in uh, Plant City. Good Southpaw from, from Cleveland, Ohio. He's a fighter that, you know, it's seventh fight, so he's still in development. He's a, uh, He was fighting the, the, the Mexican. I think his name was Damian Alka or something like that. I can't remember his name right now. But a tough Mexican fighter. He was, he was fighting his first t tough Mexican fighter. And, uh, you know, he did a great... I thought he boxed pretty well. You know, he did suffer a head clash, which normally tends to happen when you get a southpaw and an orthodox fighter. Um, so it's always a big thing in a fighter's career to see how they're going to react when they get that first cut. And um, I thought he handled it well. Uh, one thing I liked about Michael Gamble, I liked his pivots. You know, he did this really good, uh, like check hook where he would throw the right hook and he would spin off of it and he used he used the ring really well in the fight and i thought he boxed well so he he, he won by decision he improved a seven to no and look he's only gonna get better from fights like this uh fighting a style like that obviously you know he's gonna have to continue to improve his conditioning uh, he's gonna have to continue to improve his his timing and because this his style is very much a, a a style that's reliant upon timing and and and, and being able to uh you know flip opponent's strengths on them being a counter puncher so uh those things come with time and experience and i'm sure uh in ohio they got great sparring i'm sure he'll improve as, as time progresses but a good win for him he's seven and oh now and overall just a a good night of boxing a pro box you know um, i really did enjoy the fight i really did enjoy the card um go watch it you know again i reiterate man you guys can sit here and say whatever you want maybe you can say i'm being biased maybe i am to a degree because i think you know i just think more people should really know how good angel leo is and um, I'm, I'm glad that people are starting to see a little bit more of it now because he's on pro box and he's putting in the performances. But um, look, I would like him to fight the, the Komatov for the winner next. I don't care who wins the fight. I'm picking him to beat either one of them. I, I just don't think... Um, even like what... Like, and I'll end the video on this note. Even with a guy like Odebeck, who I rate highly. You guys know I love Odebeck Komatov and I rate him highly. But even me, before this fight, I even I had some doubts about if Angelo could beat Odebeck. But seeing the last fight and seeing this fight and... And knowing mentally how he's developing as a fighter, I just think Odebeck Komatov, his defense is a little bit too leaky. Um, I think he fights kind of at the same pace a little too much. And I think even him, like if he, be, if he, if he beats four, like I think he will, I, I would even pick, I would pick Angelo to beat Odebeck Komatov in, in, a, in a world title fight. Um, but it'd be, it'd be a great fight. I mean, I, obviously, I don't write Odebeck off. I know, what he's, I know what he can do. I know what he's capable of. 
But I also know what Angel Leo is capable of. So that's that's why, I, to me, that's one of the best fights you can make in the featherweight division. And it's probably the number one fight at featherweight I want to see this year. So, um, yeah, that's my little rundown on the card. Good win for Angelo. Good, great win for Antonio Moran. And, and, a, and a good win for um, Michael Gamble as well. But um, look, guys. I'll, I'll be I'll be flying to Vegas. I'll be getting to Vegas tomorrow. Pete Dobson weigh in tomorrow. So now we got to turn our attention to Pete Dobson and Connor Ben. Big fight. Stay tuned for coverage on that. A uh, lot more content here on True School Sports. And yeah, man, just I got interviews from this. I have from here in Plant City. I haven't even uploaded yet. So stay tuned for that. Keep it locked. Keep supporting the 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 channel. You know, shout out to everybody. I just hit we we had seventy two thousand subscribers last night, and I'm so appreciative about of that because um. There's so many boxing channels, so to, to even get this far is a, is a blessing, and I really do appreciate you guys, because I love this sport, and I'm glad that you guys share the, the love of the sport with me, so um, I'm going to leave it at that. You guys, let me know what you guys think. What did you think of Angelo Leo's performance? What do you think about him against the, the top you know, featherweights in the world, the champions? How do you think he would do against them? Leave that down below. Let me know what you guys thought about the Tony Moran's upset victory. Anything related to the car, leave it down below. And like I say in every single one of these videos, you can love me or you can hate me. But I'm just kidding from Daniel. So until next time, take your eyes. Thank you for watching another video on the untouchable True School Sports Empire. For more great boxing content just like this video, click right here and make sure you subscribe. Much love from sunny South Florida.